for the yarn that I'm talking about. <laughs> everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Carly I am coming to you from Calgary Alberta Canada this is my space where I talk about mostly knitting about 99% of the time and where I get to share with you all my finished objects my whips or my project plans this is a very special episode as this is sponsored by knitting fever so thank you so much to Knitting Fever. They sent me a bunch of yarn to try out along with some needles and some other goodies. So I will be sharing all of that yarn with you today along with what I plan to make with that yarn. So a lot of it is going to be focused on fall patterns and prepping for the cooler weather. So let's get started. Before we dive right into the project planning, I'll start with what I'm wearing. This is a brand new finished object that no one has seen on this channel yet, as it was a pretty quick one that I just did over the last week. So this is the tulip sweater. This is by Melody Hoffman and I did a modified version. I did shorter sleeves and I did the cropped version because I wanted to use this to layer over the winter and to wear with high-waisted skirts and over some dresses in the winter time to pair with tights. So I'm very pleased with this. Um, I used the Juniper Moon Patagonia Organic Merino for this in the color what is the color? I think it's acorn. I think the color is acorn. So um, I'll talk in more detail about this on the next episode when it's kind of a more standard podcast episode. But let's just get started with the project planning right now. So like I said, Knitting Fever sent me a bunch of beautiful yarn to try out and I've actually already got started on one project. So we'll start there before we go into some of the future makes that I want to do. One of the yarns they sent me was Queensland um, Collection Tenderfoot. And this is a fingering weight yarn. It is 95% merino lambswool and 25% polyamide. And you get 410 yards with this. It is a really beautiful, like off-white, almost gray color. And it's just a perfect kind of neutral base color. So with that in mind, I have been wanting to make the porcelain sweater by Lay Knit for such a long time. I guess basically since it was um, published, the pattern that is. And so I thought that this color here would be a really perfect base color. Also, before I forget, all of the yarns that I mention are linked down below in the description box with the links and some information about the different yarns and the companies. And um, all the patterns that I mentioned today will be linked down below also. So I have started the porcelain sweater and I am doing the contrast color with the leftovers from this sweater here. So you start knitting flat and you start on the back panel. So this is kind of like my first true stranded color work piece. And I was a bit nervous because I always hear about color work can be quite difficult when knitted flat and not in the round. And so I was a bit worried about doing that and not just going straight into the round, but I found that it's actually not that difficult at all. And maybe because this is quite a simple um, color work motif that it's quite manageable and only two colors. But anyway, here we go. I just started this yesterday. So we've got our back panel. It's curling up a bit. Let me hold it down here. And I am just obsessed with this. 
I yeah, started this yesterday. I was so eager to just get through all of this white stockinette so I could start the color work. And I am very, very pleased. I think this is going to be one of those knits that's just really, really addictive and fun. And so far, like I'm really enjoying the color work portion of it. I haven't found it too difficult. Usually I find reading charts really overwhelming for my eyes and I can't focus and my eyes are all over the place. This one I find is just perfect for me. It's not too much. The charts are like, the repeats are quite short so you, your eyes don't have to focus on too many squares and blocks at once. So I'm finding this to be a really good color work for myself. Um, after I finish the back panel here, I will have to keep these on hold, these stitches on hold, and then start the front panel, knit that back and forth and flat as well until I can join in the round, and then the rest of the color work for the body, which I believe will be two panels of this um, color work here, will be knit in the round. And then the sleeves, it's this is drop shoulder, are picked up and then knit in the round too. So you do get the knitting flat over with in the beginning. The hardest part is in the beginning and you get that over with. And yeah, so far, like I said, it's not been that challenging. So I am very happy that I decided to just dive into it and go for it. Uh, I did make a swatch, like a tiny, tiny swatch beforehand just to see if I liked the color combo and to practice the color work knitting flat. And I do suggest that if you haven't knit color work flat before, it just kind of gives you that practice. You can do all your errors on the swatch before you dive into your project. I am knitting the smallest size, and I believe it calls for a four millimeter needle for the body of this. Now to get gauge, I'm a very tight knitter, so to get gauge, I had to go all the way up to a five millimeter. And I was a little worried about that because I was scared that it would be too much of an open gauge and show all of the, the strands and like the uh, contrast color through the, through all of these stitches. But I think it's okay. I think it's turning out. You can't really see it and I'm happy with it and I think it'll, I think it'll turn out okay. Now, speaking of the needles, uh, where are they at? Here they are. <laughs> Knitting Fever also kindly gifted me an entire Luca interchangeable knitting set. So I've been wanting an interchangeable knitting needle set for so, so long. And it has been so nice having these now. I'm knitting with them right now. And as you can see, they're, they're um, this beautiful green color that I'm very, very obsessed with. And yeah, as someone who's just always had like the fixed circulars and not these interchangeables, it has been such a game changer to just be able to screw these off and change needle sizes. <laughs> Especially when I was finishing up this sweater, I switched over to the Luca needles for the arms and to just be able to switch them off for the ribbing to go down a smaller needle. Oh my god, it was so nice. So I'll open this up and I'll show you what all the needles look like. And they come in a bunch of different colors too, I believe, but they chose out this beautiful green, which is very similar to that matcha green hat that I'm going to be making. So I love, love, love this. And I just think the case is gorgeous, the needles are gorgeous. I could not be happier and could not be more thankful for this Luca set. So yes, this is my porcelain sweater and the beginnings of it. I was really torn about the color combination. I love, love, love the blue and white that's in the original porcelain sweater and what the design was based off of, but I didn't have any blue yarn and I was, I, I mean, I love this color. I knew I was going to need to use this as the base and the main color. I was even considering doing a slightly less contrasting mix and doing like a pink and white together. And I was also considering doing another high contrast one and doing this nice deep wine color. 
that knitting fever scent but after some contemplation I did think that I liked this the best and it was a good way to use up some of this leftover yarn and it's just mostly I think it's like the most me this color combination so I'm very very happy with it I think I'm going to be working on this a lot <laughs> and because I want this as a finished object so badly I I just cannot wait to have this in my wardrobe also because it is kind of like a um, oversized a sweater with a lot of positive ease which is an I don't have a lot of those items in my wardrobe so I'm very much looking forward to this and I cannot wait to have this to wear during Christmas and time and the holidays. So that is project number one. And the only thing on my needles that has to do with this new yarn right now. So I have been looking through Ravelry and I do have my iPad down here with some of the projects that I've been looking at. And I thought we could go through some of the yarn today and just look at some projects that I'm considering for some of this yarn. So we've got more of this Queensland collection in the Tenderfoot and in this beautiful, beautiful, like deep wine color. This isn't a color that I wear often, but I really love it and I think it's one that I kind of want to wear more of and it's very appropriate for fall and winter in my opinion. So again, this is fingering weight yarn and a couple of things that I saw online that I thought could be really beautiful in this was the Sunday Tea by Petite Knit. I just thought that this dark color would look so classic and clean in that pattern and I wanted the Sunday Tea for a while too. So it would be nice to have like a merino wool t-shirt to wear in the fall and winter time and I feel like this color also kind of makes it a little more fancy so I think I could really like dress this up and it could just be such a good staple to have in my closet. So the Sunday tea is definitely a high contender, but I was also thinking of the Anchor Tea, another classic from Petite Knit. And again, I think it, it's very similar in the Sunday tea with the circular loop yoke and the increases, but um, just slightly different. And I do view the Anchor Tea kind of a little more casual than the Sunday tea. So I could see myself making that in this yarn too, because I think this color would kind of elevate it and make it more, um, just uh, more cl classy and pulled together. But I could also see myself making the anchor tee in this color here, which is another of the Queensland Tenderfoot. And um, yeah, I don't know. This is color dark oak. I'm not sure what the color is for this one. It doesn't say on the tag, but I don't know. It's really hard to decide. But for this one, I'm the one I'm leaning to the most is the Sunday tea. So let me know what you think. Again, for this dark yoke, so we've thinking maybe the anchor tea by Petite Knit. There's also this other project here, and it is called the Mooka Pullover by Ari Shimizu. It calls for fingering weight yarn and it, it has a couple of different options for the sleeves. So it can kind of be like, kind of just like a slouchy, loose fitting V-neck shirt with some ribbing on the edges. Or instead of finishing it off with ribbing, you can go in and put on these really loose, like bell open lace sleeves that is just so my style and <laughs> would go so well with a lot of things in my wardrobe. And I just love it. I love it so, so much. I love the openness and the flowiness to this top. I just thought it would look really pretty in this color too, because it is quite a involved design with all the lace and the openness. I thought it would look really good in a neutral color, such as this dark oak. So anchor tea or dark or the 
Muka pullover <laughs> are some things I'm considering for that. There was also just released the Darling Wrap by um, Pernille Larson, also known as the Knitting for Olive. And this is a ribbed wrap sweater using fingering weight yarn. So I'm not sure if I have enough yardage to get a full long sleeve length wrap cardigan out of the yardage that I have for this, but I figured I could do at least three quarter length or even like a long shirt or a long t-shirt sleeve. And it would look really beautiful in this wrapped design. So I thought this would also look really good in this nice neutral dark oak color because it could go over so many things as this would be a layering piece. <clears throat> as I mentioned before with this top that I recently finished, I want to pair a lot of things with skirts and dresses to wear in the winter time with some tights underneath. So items that are cropped and um, and right like at the smallest point of my waist, such as a wrapped cardigan, I think are really good options for layering over dresses and skirts for winter time. And I know that this is a piece that would get a lot of wear, not only in fall and winter, but throughout the entire year. And especially if I do make it a shorter sleeve or if I have to make it a shorter sleeve, it could be very versatile and be able to be worn in the summertime too. Another item that I saw that was fingering weight was the Atrium, and that is by Yamagara, Yamagara Knits, and it is a really beautiful drop shoulder uh, t-shirt, and you can do different lengths for the sleeves. So it has some horizontal stripes in it, but is also finished with some crocheted vertical stripes to kind of give you a window pane look. So I thought that could be a really fun way to incorporate some color into my wardrobe. And I was thinking of different, different um, color combinations. <laughs> and I thought if I have any scraps left over from my porcelain sweater from this, this could be a really pretty base and this could be a really pretty contrast. So this would be like the window pane grid and then this would be the base. So that's an option. Um, I could also do this as the base again and this as the window pane. Good, I'm not so sure. And please let me know what all of you think in the comments. If you really like one pattern over another, I would love to know all of your thoughts. So a lot of this is fingering weight yarn that I received. So I have been looking at a lot of fingering weight projects. And so, of course, one that I had to look at was the Tolsta Tea by Rebecca Klo, the Crea Bea. And so, basically, any of these could be a really cute Tolsta Tea. I'm not sure if I showed this one yet either. It's Queensland Collection in Tenderfoot in this really cute pink. And it's kind of heathered. It's got some different little... Um, variations of color in there. I'm not sure if you can see it. So a Tolsta tea is one that I haven't made, but is obviously one that's been so popular. And another yarn that I thought would make a beautiful Tolsta tea is this Designer's Choice Hempathy that I received from Knitting Fever and it's durable cotton hemp blend. And so here's the color here. It's a really gorgeous mossy green. And it is the color Olive in 108. I thought this would make a really nice Tolsta tea, tea. And I basically want to make Tolsta tea with my modification being that the, um, the sleeves flare out a little bit to give myself a little bit of a bell shape and I might do eyelets for the raglan increases instead of make one right, make one left. So that's my vision and I'm pretty settled on that for this yarn. I either do that or I do the dapple lace raglan, I believe it's called, by James and Watts. So I'm contemplating between the two. 
but I'm kind of leaning towards the Tulsa tee because I'm not sure if I want to do an all over lace thing right now. And if I did the dapple lace, I'd want it to be long sleeve and I'm just not sure if I have that in me right now. So I'm leaning towards Tulsa tee for this hemothy and modifying it, maybe making it three quarter length with some really beautiful bell sleeves. Because of that yarn is hemp and cotton and quite thin, I think it's going to have a really beautiful drape to it and that it would just be perfect for that kind of modification. Now back to this pink yarn. I've had a couple thoughts about this yarn. What I'm leaning towards the most is a shawl because I thought that this beautiful cherry pink would be a really lovely accessory to have in the winter time when I'm wearing a neutral coat and need some sunshine in my life that this pink would be a really great option for that. One that I'm considering is the Red Bud Winter by Laura Ayler, and it is just an all over garter stitch shawl that calls for fingering weight yarn, and then it's got a little bit of like I cord or slip stitch details. But I just thought it'd be really nice because who doesn't love a good garter stitch pattern every now and then just to kind of take your mind off of things and to be able to have a mindless project on the go. So I really am leaning towards this Red Bud Winter. For this one, I think that this yarn definitely is calling to be a shawl. Now, I also have this gorgeous, fluffy, soft, beautiful Mirasol yarn, which is 42% baby alpaca and 42% fine merino wool, and then 16% polyamide in the color ochre. And it is just the softest yarn <laughs> you can imagine. And it is a bulkier weight uh, yarn, so I was kind of, I wasn't too sure what to make with this. So if any of you, I have two skeins of this, so that gets me, is it 200, almost like 500-ish yards. So um, I was thinking like a slip over could be really fun. I have some slipovers queued here. Let me pull them up. So there's the Cozy Slipover by Iris H, which calls for a bulky weight yarn. And that's something I can, am considering it, except I would just do a mock neck instead of a full fold over turtleneck because I always feel so suffocated when I wear any turtleneck. And then there was also this Champagne Slipover by Strick Fritted probably didn't say that right but it's got some really beautiful like cable detailing on the front and I thought that would be something really different that I don't have in my wardrobe and a great way to bring in a pop of color in the winter time and then there was also this cable basic cable vest by a honey knits by cam it calls for air and weight yarn but I figured I might be able to make it work with this and this too is just some basic cabling down the front and a nice little like mock neck situation for the neckline. So I'm pretty torn about which pullover to do. If any of you have any suggestions, a preference on the ones that I listed here or maybe a different pattern that I haven't mentioned, please let me know. That would be greatly appreciated. I just think this is a really fun, soft, playful yarn that could be really cool to work with and just a really fun way to bring in some color and playfulness into what my wardrobe, especially in the winter time when I need a bit of sunshine. <laughs> they also gifted me some Noro yarn. So Noro is made in Japan and it's some really beautiful gorgeous yarn. I've made a couple of projects with it before. I've made um, a polo shirt and then a headband. I have not worked with this yarn yet from Noro. So this is the Silk Garden Light and it is just a great like variation gradient of color in here. It's got purple, brown, orange, 
peach, green, yellow, blue, it's got it all. <laughs> and this is 45% silk, 45% mohair, and 10% wool. So I've got 125 meters of this, 50 grams, and I am not sure what to make with this yet. So if anybody has any ideas, I would love to know. I've also here got some more of this Noro yarn. And what kind is this here? This is Silk Garden Solo and it's all in one color. And it's just a beautiful like purple leaning brown, I would say. And it has the same contents as the other. So 45% silk, 45 mohair, and then 10% wool. Uh, again, I don't know what to make with this. This is 100 meters. I am not sure. So if anybody has any ideas, I would love to know. Maybe I could get a pair of like mittens for my niece out of this or something, or a little hat for my niece or nephew. I think that would be really fun, especially with this one here, all this rainbow. So I'm trying not to get too overwhelmed with all of the different possibilities that I have here with this beautiful yarn. I spent hours and hours the other day on Ravelry, changing my mind about a thousand times. <laughs> because I just, uh, there's so many options online and it's too much for me. If I have too many things to choose from, it does not go well. So I finally just, I just, I had to narrow it down. The ones that I showed you today are the ones that I kind of am all leaning towards. I chose dozens and dozens more that could work for all of this yarn, but I had, I had to cut myself off at some point. And one more thing that I want to show you that I received from Knitting Fever was this beautiful handcrafted wood shawl pin from Luca. And it, I haven't opened it up yet, as you can see, but it is just absolutely gorgeous. I have my, um, what's it called? Press flower shawl from Amy Christoffers that I made last year. I cast it on almost a year ago. <laughs> and it, it's kind of a weird size shawl. Like it's kind of in between a medium and a large, I would say. And... I, um, I've been needing one of these to keep it shut. <laughs> so I am just so thankful and I love this so much. So Knitting Fever and Luca are also linked down below if you wanted to check any of their things out. Knitting Fever also has a lot of resources on their website. They have a ton of different patterns, um, specifically for the yarn brands that they carry. So, um, if you had this yarn, for example, or any Mirasol, you could just go straight onto there and see a bunch of patterns. <sighs> so I, I guess I have a lot of knitting ahead of me, which makes me very happy and very thankful, especially as we get into the cooler seasons and we start to spend more time inside. I am not one to get excited about fall in the cooler weather. I never was. I have a really tough time with cool weather um, but this year it is my goal to not complain about the weather <laughs> and I like last year I was knitting at this time but not nearly as much as I knit now and I know that knitting and now kind of being more active in the knitting community online will make a huge difference in the winter season and the cold months and will help with my mood a lot and it has actually made me feel a bit more calm about entering the cooler weather and just know I just know that I'll have a lot to fall back on as in my knitting and the knitting community which is huge so um yeah I am trying to get excited about it through my knitting and through project planning and through seeing all of your beautiful works and makes online it really does help during difficult seasons in life <laughs> 
So thank you all for coming along with me on this video and watching. I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the plans and the yarn that was so kindly gifted to me by Knitting Fever. So thank you to Knitting Fever. And if you all did like this video, please consider liking, or subscribing, or commenting. And maybe let me know what you're working on while you watch this or if you have any um, ideas for this yarn or maybe what you plan on knitting throughout the fall and winter seasons. So thank you all so much. My next episode will hopefully be in about a week or two, fingers crossed, because I do have a lot to update you all on and I don't want it to go too long <laughs> without updating because it can get a little hectic and it can get easy to forget what you've worked on since last sharing. So look out for that episode and I'll talk to you all later.